So this is my week three video or part three of the 12 cylinder or uh, hopefully 24 cylinder uh, H engine kind of based on the Napier Sabre. Um, see I got uh, two engines there chained together. Um, the table's in the way but it follows the basic idea so so this chain here will go straight down to the engine underneath it and then then they'll come back up like this so keyed keyed to the shaft there bearings on it and uh, I'll go around the back and show you so that's the general idea and I've now got uh, my uh, six uh, horizontal shaft engines got the two there and then the four of them back here I'm gonna leave two of them red uh, just because that was their original color I know it looked like one big engine if it was they're all the same color but I just uh, prefer to leave them the factory color um, so that's the the basic layout there and you can see from the shaft how long it'll be uh, up for the 24 cylinder so now I've got to start work on the frame and uh, assemble the uh, various engines crankshafts in them everything get them all buttoned up uh, but I also want to try to run it as uh, uh, a two cylinder unit like this just to uh, work out the bugs of uh, chain tensioning because see the top motor fires that'll pull the which way do they turn they turn this way so that'll pull the chain tight between it and the bottom motor but it'll put it slack towards the shaft so I can't have three ten chain tensioners here and then later on the bottom motor will fire so you have uh, reversed loading and that causes uh, problems if you're just driving the shaft that'd be one thing but the, then the, the second cylinder kicks in and complicates matters so I want to do a test there to uh, see how the chain uh, reacts uh, rather than you know building uh, all 12 engines and trying it and having the problem then so I'm trying to uh, work through some of the problems as I go instead of having them all crop up at uh, at the end of the project and that's kind of how it worked with uh, the real airplane engines they would make a two-cylinder unit or something to test it and develop the combustion chamber and all that apparently I'm fighting a helicopter here so anyway uh, I'm going to show you some on the uh, colorized drawing I've done of the Volkswagen Vulture now um, so the reason I uh, talk about the Vulture is that uh, the Napier Sabre engine for the Hawker Typhoon uh, they were in a direct competition with the uh, 24 cylinder uh, Rolls-Royce Vulture now it has uh, one crankshaft and all of the uh, all 24 connecting rods attached to that uh, four per master rod and unfortunately the connecting rod and bearings were uh, a problem area for that engine so um, whereas the Napier Sabre ran uh, two crankshafts so 12 fork and blade rods on each uh, crankshaft and that seemed to work out better now both of these engines had uh, serious uh, development difficulties so there's very little it's like the Vulture disappeared basically Whereas the Napier Sabre went into production in the Typhoon, there's probably, you know, three or four thousand uh, Sabres made. Whereas there was like 500 and something Vultures made. They did use them in the Manchester Bomber, but uh, I say there's there's only very few of them left in the world. Some from crashed airplanes. So that's one reason I'm I'm just uh, trying to show you a little bit more about the the competition between the two uh, varying designs there and. Both of them uh, were the, you know, the first British uh, engines to put out 
uh, 2,000 horse give or take and they had serious development problems with them both so um, it wasn't just rolls Napier also had uh, big problems with the Sabre so the bigger the motors got uh, the more problems they they had but like I say I'll try to do a cross section of the Vulture just because uh, I don't see one on the internet but anyway I'll show you the development of my colorized uh, drawing of it here next so uh, here I show the various stages of uh, coloring in uh, Rolls-Royce Vulture cutaway drawing. Started out with uh, you know no coloring, and then here I've colored in the pistons and the connecting rods. So here I've colored in the ignition wires, spark plugs, and the uh, supercharger and intake air track and here's the completed colorized drawing of the vulture zoom in a bit you can see at the front the gear train for the propeller etc in the lower bank you get the uh, six pistons in a row there, they're only showing five. One of them's not cut away. Uh, purple exhaust valves and blue intake valves. You can see them here too. Intake valves blue, exhaust valves kind of a pink color. Overhead cam, purple. Superchargers on the back, see the impeller there. Green is uh, antifreeze coolant. It's quite a bit of green, and I also colored uh, about a million bolts uh, brown. You can see them all the way along there. Here, there, there. And the spark plug wires are this uh, light purple. Spark plugs are yellow. Anyways, it's uh, actually one of the more detailed drawings that I've uh, colored in. Got quite some time to uh, to do this. I'm planning on doing a uh, cutaway drawing uh, of the Vulture, showing uh, like from the end view, uh, four pistons in the X, because it doesn't appear to me that one of those exists. Anyway, that's uh, that's the Vulture, and there's the wind. So one of the three horse motors I'll be using on the 12 cylinder there is. Uh, one of these, this off a water pump or something like that. Got this uh, special uh, housing here. And you flip it over. It's actually a uh, roller bearing, or sorry, ball bearing uh, crankshaft on it. Unfortunately, the ball bearing is pretty well seized. But what I wanted to point out here is how you time these motors. Zoom in here and see if it'll stay in focus. This camera's noted for not focusing. Anyway, so you got your timing dot on the camshaft, and you've got a dot on the crankshaft there. And when you rotate the two together, uh, not showing up very good. Anyway, what happens is the dot on the crankshaft is directly in line. It's between the gear teeth of the, the dot there. And this camera does not focus, but it's just not enough light down here. But anyway, so that's where it is anyways, the timing dot. I'll back it back out so you can see it there. There it is again. This ends up right between those two uh, gear teeth there. So that's how you time one of these uh, roller or ball bearing uh, uh, crankshaft uh, three horses. So to tear this apart, you have to undo the uh, tabs, lock tabs, take the bolts out, and then remove the camshaft and crankshaft all at once. And there's no other way to do it because the, the bearing's in your way. So I uh, proceeded to take it apart there, and uh, the camshaft has a little bit of rust on it. You can see there, 
not much on the lobes quite uh, salvageable just clean it up away you go crankshaft's not too bad I'll have to uh, uh, sand this with like 400 paper or something to get the rust off there to make it easier to slide uh, in the bushing and the uh, main journal got some fingerprints on it there but uh, it's okay too and actually uh, I just uh, held the bearing with my hand and started rotating the crankshaft and now it uh, spins freely so so that's good it spins right over there uh, and I'm glad I did uh, tear this engine right apart because it turns out that uh, the piston rings got a little bit of rusting too uh, the oil ring there is uh, stuck in uh, the compression rings move but the oil ring won't so what I'll do I'll stick a screwdriver in there and gently try to move it and if it doesn't move then uh, resort to penetrating oil and uh, let it soak uh, upside down or something uh, and uh, get the penetrating oil there otherwise if I try prying on too hard I'll break the ring so uh, you don't want to do that of course you know and you'd have to get another oil ring for ancient three horse Briggs so anyway um, I'm thinking I may leave this one uh, red it's actually uh, pretty good I'm going to uh, give it a Varsol bath there to clean it up and uh, I think I may just leave it red that way it'll match I may paint the back end there where the yellow is I, I thought originally the motor was yellow but it's not that's a primer underneath the red you see some scratches on it there with the yellow under the red but uh, turns out that the red is the factory color on this uh, this particular engine here let me see this uh, bright view of it there and also there's been water in the, the valve spring area too I know somehow this engine got uh, got water in it before I got a hold of it, but anyway, we'll uh, we'll make a run. So I'll have a, a ball bearing engine uh, as one of them. The crankshaft on this is very uh, very worn here um, in this area. Luckily, my sprocket will be mounting out here where I've uh, shone it up. But uh, uh, probably a bad seal in the water pump or something resulted in the shaft getting uh, really really pitted. You can, you can see it there. She's she's pitted pretty bad right in through there. But again, uh, that shouldn't matter for my application, so hopefully we can make her work just fine. Just wanted to point out something here. Um, actually, I noticed something, I believe it was on, I think the channel name is uh, Down to a Science. It's a young lad there that uh, works on uh, small Briggs's like this. Uh, anyway, I saw him working on a 5 horse, and he used, like a, uh, this is a 3 8 but 3 8 7 16 wrench to compress the... Uh, the valve spring and uh, remove the valve uh, so I just learned that that's a, a faster way than me fighting with two flat blade screwdrivers all the time so you're never too old to learn anything uh, what I wanted to show on this video say you get your valve spring off and the valve comes up and then as soon as it gets uh, just to the point of trying to come out uh, it hangs up so don't um, yank on it. I've done that before. You, know, you just end up scoring the valve guide up. What the problem is, is that the, uh, the valve has swelled up on the, the bottom uh, part where the uh, valve keeper sits on it. And so it's larger and you'll ream your valve guide out with it. So easy solution, once you get the, the spring out of it there, you just take a, uh, I believe it's called a flat bastard file here. Um, I used the fine side, put it right in there. It, it fits right in, it's got like eighth inch clearance there. And then you just uh, file the edge of the valve, uh, keep it, uh, you know, uh, perpendicular or uh, parallel to the valve and uh, just file that little lip edge off. Rotate the valve around so you go all the way around it while you're filing and uh, then magically the valve comes out. I didn't file this one but uh, just uh, for example. But that's why they hang up is because they get a um, from pounding on it, you know, the valve opening so many times it uh, builds up a little burr on the, the edge there. So you remove the burr and the valve comes right out. Just a little tip there.